Well, in Iceland, an energy company was about to go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. A new manager came in and said, OK, we've got to throw everything out and start again, and made a conscious decision based on his belief that it's a human right that men and women are paid equally. Mm -hmm. And so went out of his way to make the workforce within that company 50-50 as much as he could in terms of men and women being represented. So we're talking about engineers, we're talking about tradespeople, we're talking in workshops, we're talking at, at the managerial level. If you, if you hire 50% women engineers and 50% male engineers, then the women engineers are less qualified because the pool of engineers is lower among women. So you can't hire 50% women engineers without producing a decrement in the quality of the engineers because okay. this, this selection pool is too, is too small. You can't do that on a large scale. You might be able to do that in one company. Yeah, and they certainly argue that they're not, they're, it's not tokenism and they're not hiring second-rate women. Mm -hmm. um, they might argue that, but if you did it on a large scale, that's what would happen. Because, they're, look, you think about it mathematically. If there's 10 times as many male engineers as there are female engineers and you insist upon hiring 50-50, then obviously the degree to which the female engineers are proficient cannot be the same as the degree to which the male engineers are proficient. It's mathematically impossible. So you're saying don't even try? Uh, no. I'm, I'm saying something much more specific than that. Now, one company might be able to do that for a short period of time in one isolated location. You know, but there, of course, if you have a new manager come in and he's doing all sorts of new things, there's 50 reasons why the company is going to fail or succeed. And you can say, well, it was because of the gender equity policies. It's like, yeah, well, it's a multivariate problem. But they, they do point to the diversity now of the workforce to improved morale, to improved strategies on how to come up with solutions to their increased profitability. None of, none of that research is credible. There's no evidence whatsoever that diversity as measured by racial or gender um, representation has any bearing whatsoever on creativity, productivity, outcome, any of the things you're measuring. None of that research is credible in the least. It's not at all. Men and women make different amounts of money. Well, sorry, that's not a fine-grained enough analysis. More agreeable people get paid less. Why? They're not as assertive. So does agreeability mean that you're just not as good at the job? No. So shouldn't... It depends on the job, I would say. Yes. Yeah. It actually probably makes you better. It probably makes you better at jobs that involve care of people because agreeableness seems to be that trait that facilitates interpersonal care. So my suspicions are, it's, the research on this isn't solid, but my suspicions are that agreeable nurses are better than disagreeable nurses. But, but we don't know, and the effect isn't that large. Agreeableness tends more to tilt you in terms of interest than in terms of competence. That's, that's how it looks so far. If I'm understanding what you're saying, the picture you paint is a bleak one. No, I, I, don't, I don't think it's particularly bleak. You know, it looks like real salaries are on the rise and general levels of poverty around the world are declining incredibly rapidly. Women are being educated at an unbelievably high rate compared to 30 years ago. Like, there's all sorts of reasons to be optimistic, but equity is not one of them. It's a bad idea, and we're going to pay for We're going to pay for toying with it.